Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the React Native series. So in case you are not aware of this, we are running a React Native series on this channel where we are going to build 10 portfolio apps so that you, you can become an amazing React Native mobile app developer. So for this series, uh, we're going to continue this. In the last video, we saw the basic Hello World version, but this time we want to kind of put this onto a bigger gear. So we will be revamping and making it a pro Hello World app that we already have in this one. Before we go there, I would like to bring your attention to our sponsor of the series, Hashnode. Hashnode already is a very popular product. It's a developer's favorite a platform to write their articles. We have written a lot of articles there and you also might be writing. So for this series, if you're watching this, the only price you have to pay is share your journey. That's all we are asking that share your journey, help other fellow people by our discord or writing article about this particular video. And let me show you something really interesting that they have built up is when you click on the write up here, uh, simply just click on writing any article. You can see that there is now a WYSIWYG editor that they have already included, although you can still write your MDN if you are, if you have the markdown syntax, your favorite, you can all do that. But if I just put up a slash, this gives you an article. So whatever you're going to visualize, that's exactly how our article is going to publish. You can write your text, heading, but what's most interesting, if you keep on scrolling down, definitely I'm sure this might impress you that, hey, now you can include uh, embedded links, YouTube, Twitter, Git, CodePen, but what they're currently working on is something here, alpha. So generate article outline, summarize the article, even generate a code. Ah, oh, good. This is going to definitely change how we write articles and how we can make it summarize more precise so that it can help betterment for the community. So this is really amazing. So use this particular text editor for the article, a writing article of this particular video, and I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. I'll, uh, definitely this is the assignment that you have to do, but now let's go back on to the code part and we want to work on with this. So in the previous video, we saw that how we can have the functional app and it ran absolutely fine. Let me even show you. This is what we built, a simple hello world, no fanciness, nothing at all. But this time we want to do something tiny bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and let's go ahead and have a little bit onto this file. So let's go ahead and create a new. I'm creating it all in the root directory. I'll show you the directory structures and everything later on, but right now this is totally fine. And we're gonna call this one as app pro.tsx because obviously we are going to work into TypeScript. So that is what we will be working. Now the goal is really simple that previously we wrote everything in through the default file that we have. Now we want to write something new into app pro.tsx and Instead of loading in our index.js, this app, we want to load something from the app pro. All right, so that's going to be fun and exciting. I hope so. Let's go ahead and work on with that. And it will also give you a small revision of what is happening here. The first thing that we saw, which you might have already realized is simply to bring React from React. That's all we have to do. Now, after that, we bring in some components. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, we want to bring in some pieces from React Native. So let's go ahead and bring in from React Native. Also, we saw that we need to actually export this so that index file actually can use this. Previously, we were exporting just the app because that was all it is, but this time we'll be having a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and say export default app pro. All right, but the problem is our app doesn't have anything known as app pro. So obviously we need to create one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, we will have a function called it as app pro, just like that. And this will be like this, and there we go. And we started in the last video that although this is not producing any content, but this is the bare minimum that is required so that our app can actually function and we can actually test this out. I can just save this app pro and I can go into my index.js file, can comment out this one that, hey, I don't need this one. I can go ahead and simply say, I want to import app pro that will come up from dot slash app pro. And instead of loading, loading this app, I can load up app pro just like this. Although this will not produce any content, but if I go ahead and work on with this, this actually gives it absolutely classic. Now, just to show you that, yes, it is working. I can go ahead and simply say, hey, return. And here I can just go ahead and import some component and paste it up. So for example, I'll just bring in view and I'll also bring in text just like that. And I can come up here and say, hey, I will need a view. And inside this view, I'll wrap it up in the text. And the text is not gonna be much. It's going to simply say, 
hello. Save this and there we go. We see hello. So yes, this is working. But now we want to use a tiny bit more of the React components. In the last video, I gave you an assignment to explore a tiny bit more, even a single component that you can find out from the React Native. So let's go ahead and work on with a little bit more. The couple of components that I'm going to walk through at this time is going to be uh, first and foremost, the style sheet. Style sheet is a component given to us by React Native that is responsible for styling the component. For example, you want the flex box, you want the hello world to be bigger, smaller, bold, all of this can be done via the style sheet. Now, apart from this, we will also be using something known as use color scheme. Now, this is also interesting through which you can actually uh, use a simpler dark mode, light mode, maybe multiple modes in your color. So we will just take a look of this, a small glimpse. Later on, we might use it. But right now, just wanted to give you a glimpse of it. Notice here in this one, I'm not using any safe area view or something because we have already discussed it. Now you know the importance of it. So it's your job to actually use the uh, safe area view in this app and write an article about it. That's all you have to do. All right. Now, first thing that we are going to do is uh, use a little bit of TSX, that is TypeScript. Now, TypeScript is nothing too much worried about. I have already a series on this channel in case you want to master it. But throughout the series, I'll walk you through a little bit of the TypeScript so that you can understand it a little bit more. Now, in this one, what I'm saying is I showed you a simple example where this return can actually give you a problem. As of now, if I don't return anything, for example, this is totally fine. This has nothing to do. This actually works. But there should be a case where I should return a JSX element. So what I can do is I can put up a colon here and I can simply say we will have a simple JSX dot element. So what I'm saying here is that this method should and should always return a JSX element. Now it's saying that, hey, you actually should be using void if you're not returning anything or you should return a JSX element. Now, even if I return something like this and I just say a hello, it says, hey, this is not a JSX element. This is where the TypeScript shines. It just provides you some features so that you write less buggy code. So we'll just hit return in this one. And now let's go ahead and return a simple view. So we're going to go ahead and say view just like this. There we go. Now this is all happy. Now what we're going to do is declare a, a variable or a constant. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to Call this one as is dark mode. All right. So we have is dark mode. And now we are going to use this color scheme. Through this, we can actually use a lot of color schemes. So what we're going to go ahead and use this one is simply say, I want to use a color scheme just like that. And the syntax is really simple. I'll just minimize this so that we can first focus on writing this. And all we have to use is triple equals and then simply have to mention dark. A little bit weird, I give you on that, but yeah, this is the syntax where we go and use the color scheme. Now I'll show you where you can actually define more of the color schemes, how you can tweak that later on in the series. Uh, but right now, this is more than enough to get started. This is really the beginning of the series. So we have got this one. All right. Now, not only this, we're going to go ahead and create a couple of style sheet as well. Since we have brought in the style sheet, we obviously want to use it. So we'll go up here at the end of the function and we're going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to bring in styles. This styles will come up from style sheet dot create. There we go. We have a method. In this method, we can define an object just like this. All right. So now we have this object and inside this, we can define a lot of style sheet as much as we want. For example, let me give you a brief overview that I want to have a style just like in the CSS we have. I'll simply say I want to have a style named as container. Again, notice the syntax colon and this is also an object. So it's almost like a binding of a key value pairs. Yeah, this is all you have to uh, kind of memorize. Then we will say that, hey, I want to use a flex of one. I'll definitely walk you through more of this flex and how it works in the React Native in the upcoming ones. But we'll just go with this and I'll just say align items to be center. So we're going to go ahead and say align items center. All right, that's all. That's all what we're doing. We will not touch anything else. I'll come back onto this a little bit later. Now, how to apply these styles in the view? I'll say, hey, there is a prop or property available known as style through which you can apply these style sheets. I'll simply use equals and a curly brace and then I'll call the object that I created styles. Remember, this is the styles. This is exactly the object that I'm pointing this guy. All right. So in this, there are many key value pairs. This container happens to be one, but there could be many. Which one would you like to apply in this one? In this case, obviously, the basic one that we want to have is container. So just put up a dot and container. 
that's how you bring in style. There could be more like container, element, item, just put a dot and this is the same syntax you have to follow. All right. Now let's go ahead and provide some of the text as well. So we're gonna go ahead and say text just like this. And in the text, we are going to simply say, hello world. There we go. But in this text also, we want to apply some of the mode styling. So really common syntax style. And then we are going to simply say styles. And this time we are going to say that, hey, this style is not going to come up from the styles because we haven't created anything, but we want to do a little bit of a different syntax. So we'll just use the curly braces just like this. And based on the variable, which is is dark mode, we will apply the style of the text. So for example, we're gonna go ahead and say is dark mode. If it is true, then we want to use a white text. Otherwise we want to use a black text. So we don't have that style. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So all I'm saying is putting up a comma and I'll name this as white text. Feel free to name it anything that you like. And all I'm saying is that the color, oops, not like that. Color is going to be white and white happens to be three, four, five, six. There we go. And similar to that, we'll be having a dark text. There we go, just like this. And we'll be saying, hey, color, you will be black. Uh, although I don't use this kind of a black, but in this case, it's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And uh, there we go. We forgot actually this guy and this guy. We forgot here this guy and this guy. So there we go. It should be all happy now. Okay, so based on this, if the dark mode is true, then we are gonna go ahead and provide the styling like this. Then we'll say styles dot, then we'll use, if the dark mode is there, then obviously the text should be white. Otherwise, we'll be saying styles dot white text. Told you, really, really simple. If the dark mode is on, that means the text should be white, otherwise it should be white. So notice here, we're just in the very start of the series and yet we got the idea of how the dark mode and light mode can be styled up. So this is all good. We will be uh, just saving this up and now let me bring it up. There we go. We have a hello world. There are a couple of things where you sh which you should really notice. I will bring it to your attention in a second. But first and foremost, let's go ahead and work on with this one. So I'll just shift it a little bit. What happens if my color mode I want to ship with my app is light? If I go ahead and refresh this, Notice here, nothing happens because the default system here is working into the dark mode. And we can actually go ahead and change this one. So just wanted to bring your attention that there could be more dark mode is on or not. Based on this, a lot of things can be done. So I'll just say dark here as of now, but we can go ahead and turn it on and off. So is dark mode right now, what is the value? I'll show you how you can do console log and all of that, but just to give an idea how this can be done. If you can actually show some light on this one, I highly recommend to do it on my Discord. This is a little bit of your exploratory, how you can do this. I'll definitely discuss that as in the Discord as well as in the upcoming videos. But this is what I really want to bring your attention. Just by saying light is not going to come into the light mode. All right. But just to give you an idea that yes, our style sheets are working. I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll modify this that hey, if this is the case, then we are going to go ahead and say this, hey, let's go ahead and turn this into dark. So we'll say dark text, save this and the text converts. So our styles are working, but this requires a little bit more exploration. I'll just turn it back into white text so that we have a white text. Okay. Now coming back on to the point where your a lot of attention should go on is this guy. In case you remember, how does the align item work? Is it work from top to bottom or left to right. It works on the principle of not on the left and right. It works on the principle of main axis and the secondary axis. I would like to bring your attention onto this one. In fact, I would love to research this a little bit more in front of you on Google as well. This is really the most important skill that you have. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and say Flexbox and I'm going to go ahead and look for a cheat sheet of this. And obviously the first cheat sheet is CSS trick, which is my favorite one. Notice here, how does the CSS works? Uh, CSS, this is how the properties works. And when you simply say display flex, and right now we are not mentioning any flex direction. Notice here, how does, uh, I want to just mention that how does the flex align item works? So let's go ahead and find this flex flow, justify content, align item should be there. Flex align items somewhere should be here. There we go, align items. So notice here, Align items, so they are working on top to bottom. 
this is the most important criteria. Top to bottom, flex starts, moves, pushes everything from the top. Then we have center, then we have this baseline. So it moves uh, simply on where it is going to stretch and all of these things. So basically, the baseline is left to right. This is all what I wanted to say. This defines the behavior of how flex items are laid out along the cross axis. This is the most important part of it. I will definitely come back onto this one. This is the most important thing. But now coming back, we can actually push this. So we are saying align item center. Now on top of this, I would like to show you a tiny bit more onto this one. We'll definitely focus on this a little bit later. But let's just say if I don't want to put it up as a center, you cannot actually go ahead and say start. If you're going to go ahead and say start, uh, this is not going to work. Notice here it shows error. Uh, what the property name is actually flex dash start. So if you go ahead and save this, this brings us no problem. What happens if I go ahead and say flex end? I save this. Uh, hopefully this is running. Probably not. Let's go ahead and see if my application is still running. Uh, hopefully, but it is not refreshing. So let's go ahead and hit a R to get a refresh. Notice here, this is where I wanted to bring your attention. Flex ends takes my element and push it on to the very end onto the left and right axis. Yes, I will not waste your much time. Uh, just remember always align items in the world of React Natives behaves a little bit different than the web. So in the world of align items in React Native, because it's a mobile, it actually shifts elements onto left and right. On the other hand, there is another property, justify content which actually works from top to bottom. Just keep this in mind. This is how it works because your excesses are changes. I, I'll definitely talk about this in the upcoming videos, but this is how notice we get this one. If we go ahead, justify content, this actually moves our element from top to bottom and align items moves our element on left, right. So again, the cross axis and the main axis are different. So just keep in mind. And again, the elements are a little bit different, like flex end is there, the flex start is there, and we obviously can move it onto the center. So this is the major element, how you should be worried about how things actually goes on. There is so much more to explore in React Native. I'll definitely show you more errors, show you more bugs so that we together can understand more of this React Native. So in this video, your assignment is really simple. Write a little bit more about the style sheet and the familiarity of how the align item and the justify content works. That is all the assignment that you have in this video. Go ahead, write about the React Native version of Align Item and Justify Content. There is a nice uh, detail in this in their documentation as well. Go ahead and try to figure it out and I'll surely catch you up in the next video.